it's November the 1st, 2024. It's Jenny from Crazy Crafts. I'm just gonna do a daytime walkthrough of my display while I work out what needs to be fixed up from yesterday. So I thought I'd bring you along for the ride. So here we go. If people started from this direction, they would first encounter my hearse. Unfortunately, I misplaced a box of things, so it's not all put together properly, but more or less was suitable, especially after dark. We were raising funds this year for very special kids. I'll add the QR code if anybody wants to donate after seeing this video. And we did list on a number of haunt listings, so that's one of them that they sent us a poster for, so we'll get to it. I have these little guys sitting up here, they're the only things facing out, well, second one of two things facing out from the fence, fence at the moment. They're little tiny skull heads, on, and I did change them over from battery to solar, so they work when they work. So, that's my hearse. I have a few gravestones that I picked up from Featherbrook Lights because they shut down and moved. Um, <clears throat> but he's made them out of plaster, so they're not super heavy, but they need to something to hold them up because otherwise, like this one, that keeps flicking up, they break into little pieces. But for your information, this one says, for rent, very small one bedroom, neighbors are dead quiet. And those ones over there, if you can read upside down, it's all yours. I need to pick up some more solar Christmas lights in bright white for my ghosts because only one of them was working this year. <coughs> Fog machine does work, but I need um, a clamp on there. Uh, this one also came from Featherbrook Lights. I haven't worked out how to make it work yet. So it's very heavy, so it's still on the trolley. <coughs> Next year it'll be working because I'll manage to do that. <coughs> this is my breathing grave. It uh, works very well, and in the nighttime run through, you can see it working. I have my little candy corn cones, witches hats, whatever you want to call them, marking the side of the footpath so people don't run into the rebar in the nighttime. But let's go around here. And <clears throat> my cemetery sign needs repairs, but it looks dilapidated, so I think that, look, that was fine. Uh, this light curtain runs um, a moving display that's got skull and pumpkin and what have you at night. Again, hard to see in the camera though. Um, and if you walk through here, I've got the cemetery. And those bones were originally American power, but they're now solar. And back around this way, <coughs> these two large 84 inch shepherd's hooks from Home Depot are currently holding, I don't know, five dollar lanterns from the reject shop. Uh, also my hanging guy did get attached to the tree, he did fall down in the wind last week. So we've uh, strengthened his cord at the top to four ply rather than two ply of um, the fishing wire, sorry, <laughs> my bad. Uh, and I think he needs his arms adjusted, but I'll get to that later. So I do offer a guided tour around my back space. Everybody's welcome to browse at the front space for free, but due to damage I hear from other people and whatnot, I offer a guided tour. And I quickly scribbled this last year, but for some reason I can't rub off the stuff that was there yesterday from blackboard so um there we go I had quite a number of people pay me by square fos so whatever and the neighbors did decide to put something out this year which was awesome all right um the stocks i also got from featherbrook lights and unfortunately to make the hounded house run i had to pull all these boxes out of the garage that didn't actually get put up yesterday and again this year the crate is still just a crate uh, we did have all the trick-or-treats 
around this stocks on the stand here and mum had a chair out here now she's lost her hearing aid so if anybody finds it like in their treat pail or anything oh, this will probably work better if I put it how it's supposed to go this is what happens when people move things and don't know what they're doing oh. but these things are on a timer so it won't work until night time I did have the body bag out on the nature strip, but I decided not to leave it there overnight. And I just noticed another one of these sticker sheets that I handed out on the ground, so I'm picking that up. Okay, let's continue on. Uh, the pillars didn't make it out, but I'm not taking them back to storage until I make them a frame because he's just screwed that very one like one centimetre thick plywood to itself and doesn't hold the screws very well they also came from feather lights so you can see I do have a happy Halloween banner on my garage and it was visible last week okay this one the pumpkin tree in the daytime looks very effective and all my little pumpkins here are absorbing solar so they light up at night so a lot of the lights in the garden are solar, all the ones on the fence and on the rooftop are American power, powered from a transformer, but I've got a couple of strings that aren't working so I'm going to have to do some tech support for that. It's the day after so our countdown is back to the number of days until next Halloween. That was supposed to go on the window, it just covered the ladder because the ladder didn't get put away. And some pumpkins in the corner. That one has batteries, but I'm sick of picking that up. A um, couple of inflatables here also on a timer, so they'll be up later. Trick or treat stand here. I gotta look into the electronics that are down there because. Mum put batteries in it and she did put batteries a couple of things in the wrong way so I have to fix them. Um, these lights are on a 6 on 18 off timer on batteries or USB. They come from Bunnings, it's the Mirabella ones down there. And they're great because when kids shout out trick or treat they flash. Um, my projector over there, there projects onto the back of these three pumpkins, the Atmos FX uh, singing pumpkins and they, well, they sing and they tell jokes and what have you, so that was cool. So you can see I've got all my pumpkin lights on the back of here. I do have to replace globes and things in a couple of them. And then we hop into the, what I've dubbed my pirate ship area. It's the best I can do to simulate a pirate ship. In the area I've got and the space I've got so the deal is she uh, that's Sandy Sailor sitting over in the corner she was on she wrecked the she crashed the pirate ship so she's got a dead friend here that does activate when I pick him up and show him to the kids this is her dead husband from last year and just a quick spin there's another dead friend just over there on the wall with my other ghostly thing. Um, so I say to the kids, this is Sandy Sailor. She wrecked her pirate ship. She broke the mast. She tore the sail. All the handles have come off the wheel. But hey, she saved the treasure. And then we're going into the... We tried to make funky names, but the dead forest. So a tree came down about over there where you can see the blue cleanaway truck going down the road, about 100 yards past there. Um, we picked it up and cut all, took all the leaves off it and strung it up all around here. It was all, all held back out of people's faces, but mm -hmm. 
So I tell the kids here, I heard a rumor there might be a werewolf lurking in the forest. So we go through here. This is my meter box in behind here. We tried to, oh no, I locked the gate. I'm gonna to have to pause and go around. Um, we have a PowerPoint in the meter box, which is good because I plug my transformer into that on a timer. All right, be right back. Okay, we're through the gate now. And so what you see as you come through the gate is the werewolf. It's just a skeleton I dressed up. We have to assure some of the younger kids. That's all it is. I am gonna to have to disguise the water heater next year. So after the Fidwidden Forest, we go into the carnivorous jungle. Mum brought all the potted plants around here so it was crowded over. So they have to walk through here and we added some accoutrements, bones down the floor here. Carnivorous plants from my Mario escape room theme. Um, storage is an issue, so we have to incorporate things and it is a kid-friendly event, so there are kid-friendly things involved. Uh, but we have extra things. That's a mister. I don't think it puts out enough mist. I'm gonna get myself one of those 12 port misters. <clears throat> so there are plants everywhere here. And then we step into Mario's Mushroom World. I made a Goomba. I made the carnivorous plants. I printed and laminated all the other bits. I made the Donkey Kong. He needs a bit of work, but he's pretty good. Mum did the hands for me. And she also did the hands for Mario and Luigi. Um, Luigi's lost his nose. It's under here somewhere. So he needs a new nose, but Mario's got a nose. We have a question box that does not currently pop things out at the top. Uh, I may make one that does, but it'll be made to, need to be made of wood with a popping mechanism, so eventually. And a power star. Swing back to the other wall. And in the young kids version of the Mario Escape World, they have to find certain ones of these monsters to solve their puzzles all right now this is the rainbow room uh, I do have some black lights but I found these strip black lights that are there's my finger up here there's one here and there's one over, over there plug into USB I've got the cables hanging there um, and they illuminate everything in here because it's all glow-in-the-dark paint but meantime, the rainbow effect looks really good in the daytime, but under the UV at night, all these pool noodles look the same colour. So you've got to brush between the pool noodles. And then you encounter these ones where they've got hands sticking out from them. So you've got to, the kids are like, oh no, they're hands. <laughs> it's really cool. So I've got three walls of the faces and I got a whole heap of these cardboard neon spots they also glow under the black light there are actually two different orange colors it's hard to tell but I've got green pink orange yellow well that I think is supposed to be reddish orange and then there's an orange orange down there that you can tell better if you think from there I don't know if you've heard, but I do a Harry Potter escape room. We step into platform nine and three quarters. Enter through the platform nine and three quarters into Hogwarts. So all the candles were lit at dusk. So there are floating candles and flying keys. And they're cool. Because you can just blow and they flutter. I've uh, got the four kids that I use Niffler, Little Dobby, Big Dobby, with a sock that the Slytherin guy has a book, gave him the book, and the book involved a sock, so now he's free. Oh dear. 
This is Cousin Eat. <coughs> Thankfully, I zip tied him all together, so he stands up not too bad. Um, Wednesday needs to be stood up. Oh, and I've lost a hat. Maybe over the fence or down the back or somewhere. And the singing hat. I did play all these things in the night version, so I've been played. And of course, that's the bookcase I made for Book Week. Running out of remembering of where. Oh, there's a hat. The problem with these hats is there's no means of tying them on, so I'll have to add elastic to them so they stay on the people they're attached to. <sighs> My black and orange cloth was magneted to the walkway I've just walked through, but it's too long, so people keep stepping on it, and then it just came down, so I left it down. Over here we have the zombie family. Mum and Dad have been shopping while the kids have been playing at the local playground and now they're just waiting and watching the kids but to get to them they're blocking that path you need to cross the troll bridge so it does say mind your step own your own supplies but you can see the effect I'm not sure does move as you walk under it. I picked up this flying witch. I'll go around the other side for the flying witch. So the flying witch, she's supposed to be more straight up. I don't think my rebar is far enough into the ground and it's leaning. It did go into the ground very easily because mum's gardening in here so uh, I have eyes for my ghosts somewhere around that have bits of Velcro that stick on. They should have been in the same box, but they weren't. I don't know what happened. Maybe they got weshed, washed or something. Um, the zombie guy crawls along the ground when he's got batteries in him. There are cauldron baskets attached to the... Sorry, I can't talk this morning. Um, the umbrella. Umbrella. <laughs> And there's an overgrown garden of sweet peas in the background. Sweet peas love it, but I did have the umbrella in there. Couldn't get to it. So the, uh, the zombie trolley has lots of fun stuff to eat and drink. And there are a variety of little children riding the I will zombify those babies one day or I might pay someone else to do it I've got these two zombie kids that I made but aren't articulated so I might have to change them now that I've learned some more stuff and they ride the seesaw got cute little silicon hands for them but they no, don't mom don't do this. What am I saying? The sun affects them. Right. I don't know if I might need to put two sandbags on that guy to make him stand up. Then we've got my archway entrance to the witch's thing, but we've left a gap in the gates and the fence so we don't need to. Oh no. That's why she doesn't work. that one works when she's not all tied up but I've just seen a battery box on the floor here which is not fun I may solarize these witches because Haunted Hill Farm via Home Depot not impressed for the price um, and especially when that happens and this was obviously super glued no hot glued to something but didn't survive transit so we will make changes. Um, my pit's here with the guy with his help me sign. It would be better if it was 
signed that does light up red at night as you can see in the night video um, so those people are all in there the witch is going to eat them it's my witch's hut it's a cubby house it's a very nice cubby house it's very expensive I got it for a hundred bucks I did replace the inside floor and I'm probably going to paint it one day to protect it but in here we have a few things I can't get this to stay on the I do tell the kids where they come in, don't answer the phone. Uh, the clock also does something like that. I, I tell the kids that the witches are having dinner, so there's a couple of freaky masks and. Oh. That's the power. Turn things off during the night and day, so battery power. Hello. Then the clock's Get going. Features. I did the masking tape trick, you know, you put masking tape on there and it was a piece of paper, but same difference. And then put the things in the right place, but firstly I had it here where there was a knot and it wouldn't hold, and now this one's not holding, it doesn't hook in properly, so I have to fix that. Oh, my bat's on the floor. I did say this video was finding out about what we needed fixing. So, they've got double sided tape on them, and I stuck the back peel off part to the other side of the webbing so that I have it later to stick back on them. But anyway, oh, did you get your light? You don't even have a mother batteries. My goodness. That looks more effective in the day, you can't see it at night. I like those, they're very well printed. And a stove with the cauldrons on it. Now this, which is this cubby house, came with the stove, the sink, the ironing board and the iron, the table and four chairs <coughs> for the good old sum of $100. I do need to fix that piece of wood though. <laughs> For now, we just step over it. Oh, and the outside lights on. Over here to the toxic swamp. The blue barrel is not as effective as I would hope it'd be. It's got a whole heap of holes in the bottom of it. But I put the smoke machine in there. And you can see the daylight coming through the holes, but the smoke doesn't come out there. But because the smoke machine's in there, got this gap where the lid doesn't shut properly. So the smoke all comes out over here. <sighs> Another prop that, a prop that I picked up from Featherbrook Lights. Uh, that zombie guy. Um, he's got the barrel upside down, so it's open at the bottom. It's easy to carry that way. My Frankie. That was a... US purchase and this witch I've had for a long time I think I, she needs to get a spray job on her foam around her face and her white core fluid underneath because it was cardboard when I bought it and then it was masonite and now it's core fluid and it's lasting my three meter guy will get stood up somewhere eventually okay the 12 foot Costco the 10 foot Costco witch Seems to just be on or off. The sensor won't work on it. The step pad won't work on it. I'm not sure what the electronics are doing there, but having seen a lot of other comments from people on Facebook about their props that don't work properly. Um, I may need to look into the electronics of that and see what I can do. Four sandbags on her and she stands up happily. Doesn't look that great, but nobody really cares. They're not looking at the feet. 
um, phantasm I picked up from Rachel, the Costco which I picked up from Liam. Thank you very much for whatever I did or didn't pay you for them. Uh, they got put up this year and are very effective. This stirring witch doesn't work so well. She runs off a car battery and I think this is his problem. That's not attached to there so it keeps coming out. So I'll have to put a proper thing on there to hold the broomstick properly or the ladle handle thing properly. Also her hand has come out of here so I think maybe I shouldn't have put this zip tie around to hold make that sure that whole hand hold the see I can't talk the hand held the broomstick but I don't even know where the hand is right now it was on the ground here somewhere need an electronics box for this just come out up to last night and unplugged everything hmm good question where is her hand Maybe it's somewhere in the wind. Alright, I got my witch's legs that the house fell on. I don't know what to do about making them shoes stand upright. Doesn't work. My chair there. Spider made from a chair. Okay. In the daylight, this is my beef netting spider web area. Now I do have a six by three foot gazebo underneath all of this. And you can see I've gone up to the peaks. I did was on two, but the wind has made it only on one. Because um, all I could do was stick it up there. The ladder's not even tall enough. Um, but also you can see th th that gives me the functionality. And the frame doesn't fly away. It's the, when you put the covers on it, it flies away. But I've got little binder clips on it. And in places I've just tied it to itself. And anchored it to whatever there was to anchor it to around the place um, I've got some lights hanging on that stand that need to go up but they don't work properly so I'm not happy about them this is my first kind of scare thing step here pads I got oh he's unplugged so he won't work um, step here pads I got from US which I have in stock for sale because heap of people wanted them um, makes the jumping spider activate one of mum's little crochet spiders and in this area there are uh, hundreds of spiders I also have these little sacks and this one's been a few years it's starting to come apart <laughs> it's full, filled with rice sorry make sure I'm looking at the video and I've got a little spider rings that are coming off of it and that just gives it like a spider egg sack kind of look I did have two or three of them so again where are they all right so people walking through here through the spider webbing it's up on the roof on the walls you can see the effectiveness of twisting and I like the twisted effect that I've got here. This gives it 3D-ness, I guess. This car is cute. I got this in 2014 when I went to the US, so he's now 10 years old. Still works happily, obviously gets new batteries every year. I'll just walk past him before he goes again. Uh, an inflatable spider here, power off on a timer. I want some more of these. Five is just not enough. But they found a place this year. A couple of spiders in the tomato cages to kind of hide them. I'm trying to keep the birds off the tomato seedlings. And or the cat. Um, Mum strung these spider webs up. They look pretty cool. And uh, this year this section wasn't open. The pallet maze, although we left it up all year and walked worked around it. Another spider web here that Mum's tried to give some 3D-ness to by having a stick pointing out from the fence. Another one of these. 
groovy little painting, printing things. And this is a tin can owl I made for mum for a while back. And as I said in the night video, these are supposed to have lights in them. I have got some remote control lights, but you know, finding the remote controls. These two, I've got two of these. They are crazy. That is lit and it's daytime and it won't light at night. What is the problem? Does anybody know how that works? Because I can't work it out. So yes, we'll put lights in those. And then we'll take the robot control with me when I go to close everything up. <clears throat> Excuse my nose. Didn't get my spinning wheel done. That is a very nice spinning wheel. Didn't get the jukebox put on. Didn't get this section. There's a whole heap of things down there that aren't up. Box things and whatnot. But didn't even get a chance to clean up the workspace. Where we'd been putting batteries and things into things. Oh, look, I got these from the reject shop and they didn't even go up. That's cute. But so many things, just hard to get everything up. I do have a friend coming around to have a look, but we'll go through here and the lights are not going to come on two seconds. All right, I've stepped back and turned the lights on. So my gargoyles, Yes, his wings are still on the floor. Don't judge. I've been busy dealing with Home Depot. Don't ask. So, this one hasn't got a hook. I think I did find a hook to put him up, so I'll go find it. So, I, I did plan to do a lot more in here. As you can see, some of the panels are bare. These are lights that you just push down and they come on. Easy to turn them on and off. Um, we did discuss, and I have seen somebody else say, oh, we've covered all our storage. Now, this is my Christmas storage. The little kitchen, the cubby house out the back is my Halloween storage. And I do have a few things hidden behind these panels here. But I'm telling you, nobody noticed it. They were all looking here and looking there and being scared. Especially the, you know, three-year-olds. So this is the daytime view of my potion cupboard. I want to get some more things in there, but just, who knows. I've got a time and effort to get them in there. Um, and my scary mirror. And some freaky candlesticks. And these guys I made up. Now this one may fall apart. Yep, okay, let's do that. But you can see inside him there's a skull and crossbones so that's a solid ball that's not a half half one that you put together I had to get that in there and hope it worked but they seem to be good and I have a whole heap of them that usually sit on the bar that didn't get put up okay so I've got these three plastic chains hanging here they're quite effective they make enough noise in their own right and all the pictures I have up at the moment are those ones that do that as you walk past them so that white cupboard usually is locked and just decorative and this potion shelf is also just decorative but they live there all the time and periodically I do things with them sometimes they become involved in part of the escape room and stuff like that I've got a bat up here so a couple of things up to look at but without effective lighting doesn't work. Now, on, on that note, I've got this red one. It's a very old lead strip when they were only white. And I wrapped red cello around it. I've got this purple one. You can't really see the purple because of the lights. I keep them in the lockers. For some reason, I lost one of the power supplies. So, recently, for those who don't know, I got in power adapters for things because you get a J car and you got to buy those ones that are all got multi heads and they're not waterproof and whatever. Now I have the waterproof ones. Let's see how effective this looks in the night time. Or in the daytime rather. So I put um, ultraviolet LEDs into that so it shines purple. Not too bad. I need to put something 
in there that will react to the ultraviolet light. It's also got a double throw switch in it, so I can put two batteries in there so if it goes flat, switch it over to the other battery. Um, these cupboards are locked. So you've got to, in the escape room, find the things that open them to get in there to get what you need out. All right, another one of those. Oh, look, that's a lovely portrait. Oh. <laughs> So just, we ended up with this little room because I don't quite have enough room to make an up, down, up, down walk through. And I might change it around so they walk down and around and then in and out and in and out next year. Um, it's relative to where I'm living and what space I have there. I want a 10 car garage. The roll top desk I picked up and there's some painting canvases over there. They're just innocuously set. So this guy. I love this guy. I've had him for years. He still works. <laughs> yeah, he's very sensitive to touch, but not, not to sound. Um, I did discuss in the night video, this guy needs new framework. I'll work out something different to do with him because what he's got no longer works. It's got heat affected. Uh, yeah, so power supplies and a DC jack and now I can plug in my purple lights. Yay. Um, that thing screeches and spins around. I'm taking this guy inside because I'm sure He's supposed to have batteries. I'm going to back of a cupboard there that's sitting on my workbench and a piece of wood to try and block the space because we ran out of panels. I'm sure there should be another set of panels, but I will make some more one day. Okay, and the clowns, and these are the lockers, so the lights just got set up on the shelf there. Two sets of lights and two power adapters. One year I went to get it out and there was two sets of lights and one power adapter. So that didn't all work. I do think somebody knocked into this last night and it moved a bit. But anywho. And then we're at the fridge with all my lovely food in it. And a couple more signs here. With the Good and bad faces. So that's the end of the walkthrough. And when you get here, this sensor light comes on so they can see the fridge. I don't have those main lights on all night, obviously. And then we enter through here into my kitchen and exit via my front door. I would like to work out another way of doing that. The first year we had them come in the sliding door and into this door and out through the roller door. But if I have both the front roller door and the back roller door open, the wind howls through there and just blows everything over. Because these panels I made, uh, 30 mil pine and core flute, which has got no weight to it, which is great for moving them around but not great because as you can see just this amount of force knocks them over and I need to work out some kind of clamping system for the top of them we'll work that out alrighty so that's the end of this video thanks for watching and I will attach the night video to the end of this. I need to crop and edit a bit. So, hey everybody, it's Jenny from Crazy Crafts. Thanks for being here and I will see you next time. Okay, bye. Hey guys, this is Jenny from Crazy Crafts. My Halloween experience this year. I do do a guided tour that I do charge entry for because it takes me a whole month to set it up. And people are happy to pay, so I'm happy to take their money. Okay, so 
I'll show you around. Actually, I'm going to show you this way around. So, my cemetery sign is all arse about. And I put some lights on. Now, that does do pumpkin things and skull things. It's a curtain of some kind. I've got some 84-inch shepherd's hooks that I got from Home Depot that I've used to hold these little lanterns that I got from the reject shop. <laughs> My cemetery here, I've got bone lights that I did get from the US originally but I have solarized them. One of them didn't get turned on, doesn't matter. Um, these are my little candy corn witches hats, so to speak. Very appropriate. My guy did get remade and put back up in the tree, but the wind's picking up, so I don't know if he'll last. And I did get this new coffin thing, which has legs and whatnot in it, but I can't get it to work, so maybe next year. I have got my breathing grave working, if you can see it happening there. The rustling leaves is just good effect anyway. And I obviously need a fog machine chiller because it all just blows away in the breeze. So I do have, they mustn't have got any solar light, little ghost milk bottles, juice bottles, whatever, that are usually solar lighted. Uh, some new tombstones. And <coughs> this one says, for rent, very small room, oh, very small one bedroom. Neighbours are dead quiet. And I've got a few over there as well. Um, they're plaster so they don't stand up terribly well on their own and I wanted them on the grass. Uh, my hearse got thrown together this afternoon very quickly. The uh, driver has a new jacket can't put his hat on because his head's attached, attached to the wall so the wind was blowing him around and I seem to be missing a packet or a box of things because I don't have any of the brackets or anything that hold the seat on so he's just propped there didn't get the lights on the wheels but made them all work okay so I've got these guys here they are solar lit and the lights are on but the flash won't show you that all right, now we're going inside. I did solarize that pumpkin as well. It's on. So I've got a rat here. My bird needs surgery. And this is my pumpkin patch, for starters. Projection didn't get turned on, but my pumpkin Three. I think I just saw a cat run away. It's awesome. I'm just trying to get around all these things before the power turns itself off. But there are pumpkins or simulated pumpkins everywhere. My guys are taking a rest from the countdown. I'll be back at it tomorrow, 364 days to go. Got my trick-or-treat signs at the door, although we don't trick-or-treat here, we do that over behind me. Some more pumpkins, oh, and the Bird of Paradise flowering orange is awesome. So this is the pumpkin patch. And these lights are Actually, they will uh, respond to my talking. <laughs> um, okay, so we have a pirate guy here. Yeah. Some pumpkin boxes. They got lots in them that didn't get turned on. Fortunately, all these lights 
are on a timer. So I still have all of these flashing lights for sale. No, I am not discounting them because it's past Halloween. Sorry, but I paid full price, so that's the how it is. Okay, so this is where my guided tour starts. This is Sandy Sailor. She's a good pirate wench, but unfortunately she crashed the ship. She broke the mast. She tore the sail. All the handles came off the wheel. But in good chick pirate wench fashion, she saved the box of jewels. Some more lights. And that little lights I need to make work. This guy... Needed somewhere to hang, but he just got hung. <laughs> Alrighty, and there's another pirate guy there, and there are lights all down the fence. I did put all the pumpkin ones here. And I did have to throw in my TARDIS to make all those down on the ground work. So go Doctor Who. Alright so at this point this is new for this year so you are now entering the forest of fear. It's a dead forest and I'm telling the little kids I hear there's a werewolf. Look out for him. So we were fortunate enough to get a downed tree recently or a huge branch of a down tree and mum and I've just been picking up branches as we walk up and down to the post office for all those wonderful people who buy webbing and motors and whatnot from me so we have all this now I'm gonna to have to fill up the trailer take it over to my friend who's got a fire all right, so through the door. <gasps> Look, there's the werewolf. All right, so we have limited light down here, so I'm leaving the flash on. So first we're going to walk through the jungle with the carnivorous plants. And there is all kinds of freaky flowers and... Oh, sorry, focus. Self-focusing. So we jungleized this area, which then led us through the carnivorous plants into a Mario area because we've got a Mario escape room there, and these are all the decorations for it. Had to put them somewhere. It's Donkey Kong. Luigi needs a new nose and here's Mario in all his splendor underneath the power star and my brick box. Oh, my lights have gone out. I guess that means that my battery is flat. Anyway, this is my rainbow pool noodle section. You can't see well, you can see with the flash on all the colours that go through here. So the idea is you wander through here. And I can't get these hands to stay up, doesn't matter what I do, but it freaks the kids out, so that's all good. Um, painted these faces and got the cardboard spots all in. Glow in the dark and stuff. Oh, there's the. Let me go back and. Oh, quick. See? Now we're getting glow in the dark. And they're all glowing in the dark. You can see the faces through there. But now all the pool noodles look the same colour.
nice. I did steal this idea from a commercial haunt in America that was on YouTube. And good news, my trick or treat map, the door, doormat is UV reactive. So now we are at the entrance to Hogwarts. Platform nine and three quarters and platform nine and three quarters. So in here we've got looks like a potions class, nothing on the black borders yet. We've got floating candles and flying keys and the kids and I've got a Dobby and a Hedwig and a Slytherin with a book and Dobby with a sock so now he's free and all the banners this is the uh, bookcase I made for book week see there, Oops, sorry then we come down here and I've got Cousin It Head on properly, cousin it. He's got a bow tie and some huge sunnies. And I've got a Wednesday and a hat. Probably can't upload that to YouTube with that video playing, so let's move out of range. I did have a black and orange curtain here, but it's too long, so it ended up on the ground. People were tripping on it. So you come through here and you can see the zombie bride and groom waiting with the shopping trolley full of goodies. Looks tasty. It's back up here because you obviously can't get through there. Now we say here, mind your step because I have now changed. And there are handles on this for good reason. Okay. Oh, I'm tripping myself up. So I've got a, a witch who's taken off into the air in her broom. And Skelly doesn't have a stand, so, well, he does, but he's not got any way of attaching it. We have my candlesticks that I got from that other place. My witch that I have had for a number of years. This is my toxic waste dump. I have a smoke machine inside the cool biohazard barrel, which was going early, but it's now out of liquid. This is Phantasm. Sorry about the light. Um, the stirring witch needs work, so she's not stirring at the moment. But she runs off a car battery, so and a wiper motor. This is my Costco witch. So she's got lifelike eyes. Hard to see, but she blinks. The uh, phantasm does as well. Got a pit of hands trying to get out and we've got the Haunted Hill Farm witches that I got last year from Home Depot and I've subbed part of their cauldron onto my cauldron to give it the green stuff. 
Okay, so I have a little welcome witch here. She's cute. Another witch, flying witch here. I've got three of these ghosts. Two of them are lit up with solar. That guy obviously doesn't have any batteries. Batteries was an issue this year. Mum brought out a box of the bee collection stuff to fill my merry-go-round. It's part of the umbrella. And we're back to the zombie playground. This belongs on the head of the girl. And the boy's got a bloody scissors. Alright, let's go through to the witch's kitchen. Apparently the witch is in. And the cat's here. Again, none of the outside lights got turned on. And now these plants here are overgrown and you can hardly see my silhouette witch at the back there, but she's good. We've got a box of... Oh! Lights off. Just letting you know that I'm already in the house. And I'll see you soon. <laughs> got some little candles. Candles on the table. So, I've got cauldrons on the pot. Candles everywhere because, you know, it's just kitchen. Um, and, uh, I've very much like that picture thingy. That's on the wall. Can't get that one to work without that one working. Are you having a happy Halloween? It certainly looks like you are from where I'm standing. Right outside your window. Bones in the cauldron, yes. Barbed wire on the fence. Costco witch. Alright, wandering over here to the spiderweb area. This is my chair door. It's a spider made out of a chair, so it's a chair door. This is my webbing this year. Unfortunately, I'm very dissatisfied with those lights that seem to be bright at the start and dull at the end. I did get step pads in and as you can see, it says step here, so hey, she works. Although, I think those kids did break my, I don't know. So I'm just going to give you a look. I've mostly used tie and clips to clip onto my frame, so these little binder clips, but, you know this is only as wide as my finger so, but um, you can see how effective it can be just twisting it round and going through and backwards and forwards and I have a skeleton in a piece of the spider webbing material. So he comes out to be dinner every year. But again, another twisted piece tied in a few different paces. And I made sure I put it all on the roof this year as it goes right up to the top.
I love that guy. He's so cute. And scares the parents more than the kids usually. And I've got this spider that I'm about to turn off because it's making a lot of noise. So this is a bit of webbing. Uh, just, you know, other web that we've got and some things. A lot of stuff didn't happen this year. It's just way too busy. There's another web in here. An owl. Owls are spooky. I made that owl for my mum. Good news. My Christmas lights work. We have skeletal sunflowers. I hope I can get some more of these because they broke everything. Looks like this is only half a one. Alright, so this is where we walked this year. And the gargoyles are manning the entrance. I left the door open because I couldn't be bothered opening it. So let's go see what's inside the haunted house. And some things made it so far. Got a witch. A scary face. This guy. Got some candles on the wall. I'm gonna focus. There you go. Made nice little wall sconces for them in gold. It's hard to uh, hang things on this because it's 30 mil wood at the top here, so it's this wide. Um, so we had to get creative with hooks. Another scary face. Scream guy on my sawhorse because you know, gotta put it somewhere. Pussycat on the drawers from the Harry Potter escape room because again, gotta put it somewhere. At this point in time, these are the Kmart ones. <laughs> so, this is my potion making ingredients. But I tell the kids, severed fingers and pickled eyes and shrunken heads and whatnot. And my spooky mirror that I made, painted up and etched the spook off it. Some actual potions I've made here, but obviously I didn't seal them, so they're going to have to be remade. Okay, we're going through these chains here, which after 50 people have been through, or however many there was, I don't remember. This is my collection of potion bottles and ingredient bottles. This is the Alder Kmart guy. Freaky bat. Everybody else about my face in the jar. Um, guy who used to see for getting massage um, photocopied his face. So he gave me the photo and I wrapped it in the jar. A lot of this stuff doesn't get seen because people walk through too quickly. But, uh, I put some of my elbow x rays in frames. That's cool. This is my... Oh, wait, here you go. UV light fed test tubes. Okay. And I've got a number of these pictures on the wall that do this. Okay, we came around here and there's a room because so many panels and so much space in the garage. Here's another Kmart guy.
some of the things, one of them sits off another one, sits off another one, sits off another one. Three pictures in that one, cool. Here's another one. Three pictures in that one too. Alright, so we're out here and back around here. I've got a filing cabinet that's part of one of my escape rooms. Covered in a cloth because it also gets used in my Harry Potter room as a writing surface. But now we have all these extremely gruesome bloody instruments sitting on it. Okay, coming around here I have a one of those let's Day of the Dead kind of One. This guy, I love this guy. Back up so you can see him. <laughs> this guy is very old and his feet don't work properly anymore. So I'm finding it terribly difficult to find the right shaped parts to make it. To replace his frame, so I might have to just do something different. This here, I don't know if he's supposed to be standing up, but it, oh no, he moves. I think this guy's supposed to have batteries, but I can't find where they go. Because he's got LED eyes, so you know, must be something somewhere. This one I've had for a long time, but um, she no longer works and you can't get into her to repair the electronics, so she's got a nice long skirt. A couple of these dudes, just hanging things because things had to be hung. And another that thing. This is another Kmart thing. And then these guys. He's got a knife, I think. Turn sideways all the time, I don't know why. And this one is out. Twisted around on their ropes somewhat. We come here, and this is my door of my freezer, my outdoor freezer that I need to replace the seal on. I tell the kids that's my dinner. And we've got a sensor light here, but this sign that does that one and this sign that does that one and then we are at the door to my kitchen which is the end of my haunted tour I just let people through and out the front door all right thanks for watching guys catch you next time hopefully next year there'll be more props and everything will be up on time